Hi, good morning, um, and good evening to everybody following us around the world through the live stream. I'm Emily Dalton-Smith. I am the Vice President of Product Management and Social Impact at Meta. It's great to be here at the Palace of Fine Arts. There's really something so special about this place. Um, I live in the area, and I love bringing people here to walk around, to enjoy the scenery, and to be with friends. It's a really beautiful building. But the reason I love coming here is not the building. It's what the building does. It's the people, not the bricks. And I'm also a mom of two amazing kids up here with their mouths very wide open, Finn and Lila. Um, I'm the daughter of two very dedicated public servants, which as a teenager was incredibly embarrassing, but it was a great way to learn how much power people have to shape their communities. One of my earliest memories is phone banking with my mom back when you had to go in person and call voters off of printed lists. I sat in the corner and watched my mom spend a, spend a lot of time uh, calling friends, family, neighbors, and encouraging them to get out and vote. My parents actually both volunteered. They sat on my city school board. They brought my sister and me along to clean parks. They grew tomatoes in the community garden. They rescued dogs, cats, and lots of squirrels. And because of these experiences, I spent most of my early career working on public education and helping kids get to and through college, especially kids from first generation and low income families. I also grew up in a really diverse area and did a lot of tutoring and mentoring. So I got to see what happened when kids had opportunities and what happened when they didn't. I really wanted kids' futures to be guided by their choices, not by their circumstances, which to me, helping everybody who wanted it get a college education. So I left my early jobs working in e-commerce, and I went to work in education. I worked at Arizona State University and at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation before coming to Meta. I saw there firsthand the potential to transform the way things were done um, by creating scalable solutions to social problems. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was actually a product manager before I even knew what one was. So now I'm the head of social impact at Meta, fast forward, um, and it's my job to see that our products create progress on social issues. What's unique about our work, and it's the reason I've been here for more than seven years, and I am certain I'll be here for more than seven more, is that we can go quickly from zero to impact when the world needs us. It can mean new ways, <clears throat> excuse me, for people to fundraise, volunteer, learn about important causes, or connect with organizations that can help them make a difference together. In our work, we rely on the core skills of our PMs. First, a sixth sense of organization, knowing who to go to when time is of the essence. Second, a deep respect for details, for loose ends, for answering unanswered questions, for making sure that everything is tied up. Third is technical expertise, at least in the field you're working in. For me, that's social impact. Fourth is the ability to translate your knowledge so that everyone you talk to knows what you're talking about, whether they're familiar with the material or not. And the fifth is the ability to turn ambiguity into clarity, to take ambiguous problems and turn them into clear plans with really clear priorities, risks, and trade-offs. These skills are an invaluable part of what we do, what everyone does as product managers, and they're the foundation that we use to pursue our mission to unlock people's limitless potential for good. So at Meta and Social Impact, we don't have brand, marketing, or business goals for our work. Our focus is on making a difference in people's lives. It's the people, not the bricks. The most important thing about mission-driven products and mission-driven product managers is that they need a North Star. You have to ask yourself, what is the one thing your products do that's unique and transformative? What is its purpose? Purpose can take the form of a mission statement or values, but for me, it's people. It's how a person experiences your products and the difference it makes in their life. Every product has a purpose. For example, one day when my daughter was three, she wanted to take our dog, maybe, on a journey. So she took Maybe's food all out of the bowl and then threw it around the kitchen yelling treasure hunt. I did not want Maybe to go on a treasure hunt. 
So I took out the cordless vacuum and I cleaned it all up and I stopped for a moment to think, this little thing does its job so well, but its real purpose is that I get to spend more time with my kids, I get to learn about their interests and hobbies, and occasionally I even get a few moments to myself. These tiny innovations can drive really big impact in our lives. It's not just about building a cool product that people can use to do a task. It's about giving them tools that allow them to make an impact in their lives and the lives of their communities, even if that's a little tiny vacuum. At Meta, the purpose of the tools we build is connection. So connection is a basic human need. There are actually decades worth of research that highlight the importance of social connection, linking it to important life outcomes, like how quickly we heal and how long we live. Uh, from Facebook's earliest days, helping college students get to know each other better, to helping millions and then billions of people share their lives with one another, to helping small businesses connect to customers in their neighborhoods and beyond. Connection is the through line to everything we do. It's the purpose behind the product, the people, not the bricks. So here's an example from the work that we do. In the early days, we built tools to help nonprofits fundraise for themselves. But we quickly learned that helping individual people rally their friends and families around causes was much more effective. The greatest expression of this was the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. It was a viral fundraising moment that proved people could be just as powerful as institutions for raising money. It reversed the status quo. It was actually where we got the idea to create fundraisers for the very first time. And when we went back to our North Star of people and connection, we completely switched our product strategy. We pivoted from helping nonprofits to allowing people to connect with one another. And you may have seen it once or twice. We've asked you if you want to connect with people and support a cause on your birthday for a birthday fundraiser completely changed the way we do things, and now people are using fundraisers for everything from suicide prevention to helping girls navigate menstruation so their schooling isn't interrupted to feeding people in need across the world. And people have raised more than $6 billion through our platforms. We also learn the most when we observe. Years ago, we noticed that people affected by natural disasters were posting that they were okay, or they were asking friends and family for, for updates just from their post. So we started with a hackathon. We built safety check tools to streamline that process and give people dedicated tools to help them connect with their friends and family when disaster strikes. Now we've evolved the product so it's activated by signals we receive from people in affected communities. And based on our community's feedback, we actually built another product called Community Help because again, we were watching people and saw that once they knew that friends and family were safe or they'd been able to share that they were safe, they started to respond to one another and ask how they could reach out and help, provide relief, help people get rides, help them get supplies, anything they needed to recover from a disaster. Last year during California's wildlife season, people used Community Help to help each other evacuate and find places to stay. But they also use community help for everyday things like lost pets or collecting supplies for a local art class. Um, in fact, during COVID, I saw people in my area using it to volunteer to babysit virtually for other people's kids, which I thought was genius. It's like, maybe you could come and virtually babysit my kids every day. That would be amazing. <laughs> but the important thing here is that when, with connection is the underlying purpose, watching how people were connecting helping to, keeping them at our hearts, trying to understand what we could do to help them even more. We actually empowered people to do good on their terms and they helped one another in ways we never could have imagined. And in fact, we never would have been, built, been able to build for that if we weren't keeping connection at the core and observing what people were doing. When Afghanistan fell into crisis last August, the humanitarian organization CARE had about 400 people in the country. They were worried about safety, both for themselves and their community, but also the people they helped. Their staff set up an email address and they were totally overwhelmed with questions. They could never respond to all the inbound that they were getting about how people could stay safe. So we gave them some help from the WhatsApp team. They built a chatbot in just four days to answer questions in real time. And they were able to help the entire community much more quickly than they would have had they relied on older tools. That's just one example of how we're building on deep relationships with relief partners and nonprofits. Um, but we're also continuing to build that out and with their feedback, building dedicated volunteering tools that will hopefully help them do this work in critical communities and give people more ways to connect with one another and the causes they care about. 
This is really the essence of building with purpose as a North Star. For us, it's connection, watching the connections that people have, understanding the connections that they make and the connections they'd like to make, all serve the purpose of enabling opportunities for people to help their friends, their family, and their community, and they make better products as a result. So moving forward, our team's increasingly focused on the social issues that are most meaningful and relevant to our community. For us, that's health and well-being, it's civic participation, it's equity, climate, and of course, giving. Two years ago, as COVID-19 impacted communities around the world, we quickly banded together and we created an, an information center. We'd heard from our partners and global health organizations that people needed information about the virus and that the most important thing we could do is help connect them with authoritative information that would enable them to make the right decisions for their families and just understand what was happening to them in the world around them. So we created an information hub with information from both local and global health authorities like the World Health Organization. We also partnered with influential figures like Dolly Parton and Black Doctors, .org to amplify trusted, authoritative information because we heard from our partners and from our users that the connections they wanted to make were with people they recognized, they trusted, and who could give them the information they needed to navigate COVID. We also built a vaccine finder tool that helped people locate places nearby to get vaccinated, as well as reliable information about the virus which really mattered. You know, it's hard to think about this now, but remember a couple of years ago when people couldn't even figure out where to find, find out about how to get vaccinated, much less to get an appointment. And so we built Vaccine Finder, which has helped more than 3 million people globally find vaccination appointments. Um, in the US, we also had a huge focus on representation and diversity, working to amplify content that featured medical professionals and public figures from different backgrounds, such as trans transgender rights activist El Moxley and ER doctor Mauricio Gonzalez, answering questions about vaccines and speaking directly to the community and helping people connect with respected medical and community leaders so that they could get their questions answered. Beyond medical causes, we've also built tools to help people connect with um, others to raise record amounts for COVID-19 research, to create a global call to action, and to encourage people to show up for one another in times of need. In civic participation, we've long had a huge focus on helping people get out and get information about how to vote and connect with local authorities around voter registration and participation. We support this in democratic elections across the world and have for years. As we were navigating COVID, one of the things we heard time and again from both our partners and from our users is that they wanted to connect with people to get information about how to vote and register in the 2020 election, and specifically that they wanted to understand what it meant for them during COVID. Things were changing so rapidly, so we, so we launched uh, a voting information center, helping people connect with tools and information they needed to make their voices heard at the ballot box. We help people understand how to register to vote. We help them connect with voter registration with their state websites or learn from nonpartisan partners about the election coming up. And the results were absolutely incredible. More than 39 million people visited the Voting Information Center during the 2020 election cycle. And we estimate that we helped over two and a half million people to register to vote and 100,000 people to sign up as poll workers. It's the largest voter information campaign in US history. We also want to make sure that our products are accessible to everybody and that we focus on equity when we build. This is a newer area for us. Um, in 2020, we dedicated teams across the company to helping ensure our products are designed for diversity. We're testing ways to build with equity and diversity in mind from the start, guided by experts and from feedback from diverse communities. So for example, one of the things we heard was that creators and business owners don't always get the credit for the incredible things they do and that this was especially acute for people who had come from diverse or historically underrepresented communities and for people who were just trying to get their start and were trying to build up a following and have people understand what their work was and be represented all the places it was showing up, not just by the final creator who, who posted. Especially for work behind the scenes. So we want to make sure that creators can not only create fascinating, impactful content on our platforms, but get paid and get credited for their efforts. 
So with the help of experts, we built enhanced tags on Instagram, which allow creators to get credit for everything they do and to tag the entire community of people behind their content. We're constantly testing efforts like that to ensure that our products work for everyone, and we work closely with experts in equity and diversity to think about how we design for diversity from the start. We do that everywhere from testing our machine learning models to building ta this tagging system to thinking about how we can contribute to research uh, over the next several years. The early, very early, but the results show that we can create wins for people and for our business, and we've seen that our products and our users really benefit when diversity is built from the beginning. So I want to talk a little bit about a bigger cause. So keeping our North Star in mind and thinking about people con and connection and thinking about the information that people are, are hungry to connect to and how we can help amplify that. We think about global impact a lot when we're developing our products. One of the incredible things about the scale we have is that we have to think about the entire world and we can find ways to connect people to the greater good, including the greater good of our planet. We've recently added fundraising to Instagram Reels, empowering creators to use their talents to help causes locally and globally. And we're constantly improving our Climate Science Center, which has seen more than 200 million visitors to get information about climate science so far. As a company, we've already achieved net zero emissions across our operations, and we've set a goal to reach it across our entire value chain by 2030. And we announced that we joined the Frontier Initiative with Stripe, Alphabet, Shopify, and McKinsey, a $925 million advanced market commitment to purchasing carbon removal technologies. So we'll focus more on climate change in the near term and on creating tools that help people build a sustainable future and engage their communities. And finally, a little bit more on volunteering and fundraising. I mean, since our earliest days, our products have helped people connect to people all over the world in times of needs. We have this incredible opportunity. Every day we get to be with people through their highest highs and their lowest lows and everything in between. As people donate to causes to celebrate friends' birthdays, they help people after natural disasters, often reaching out to help strangers, even welcoming into their homes, or helping small businesses through the pandemic. There are ripple effects of generosity and compassion around the world. We know that every dollar counts for charities, so 100% of what's raised on Facebook and Instagram goes directly to the nonprofits being supported. One of my favorite aspects of our fundraising tools is just how accessible giving has become. Our goal is to be there when people, when people have need and to be with them through those times of need. And you see that, and even the size of our donations. Most of them are under $25, showing that the donations really come from everyday people donating however they can, whenever they can. One example of this is uh, the story of Sunflower of Peace, which is a nonprofit started by a Ukrainian woman living in Boston. Sunflower of Peace provides backpacks with first aid equipment to frontline medical workers in Ukraine. They started fundraising, and earlier this year, a single fundraiser on Facebook raised more than $1.3 million for more than 19,000 donors to send frontline medical equipment to Ukraine. Whether it's through fundraising, volunteering, or engaging with their neighbors through community help, our products help people connect through their generosity. Looking ahead, my goal is to, is to raise the bar for social impact overall. We're doing this by evolving our products, by focusing on key issues that matter most to people, and ensuring we have input from a wide range of stakeholders, from experts to our community to community leaders. We know that we can drive more community action by empowering people to share their time and, more importantly, their talents on everything from helping others to starting a new business to navigating life events. And we also know that people are looking to be more informed and engaged in the issues they care about. So we'll continue to evolve our approach here, keeping connection at the core. To scale our impact, we also partner with some of the world's leading experts to inform our product strategy and direction. And this is never something that we can do on our own. So one of our greatest successes, and I think one of the ways that we'll raise the bar for ourselves, but for everyone working in social impact products, is by continuing to work with experts and sharing our learnings broadly. But before I go, I wanted to end on one more story about products and purpose that's meaningful to me. So this is Jessica Davenport and her husband Kyle and their two kids, Cruz and Paisley. You can see them smiling at the beach. Cruz and Paisley were both diagnosed with SIOD, which is an incredibly rare condition that weakens the kidneys and the immune system. 
In fact, it's so rare that when Cruz and Paisley were diagnosed a few years ago, there was no active research about the disease whatsoever. So Jessica's incredible. She's completely determined. And when her kids were diagnosed, she did not accept that there was no answer, there was no cure, there was no research. She started a nonprofit, and she started fundraising very actively on Facebook. She's one of our power users. Um, and because of the fundraiser campaigns, Jessica and Kyle have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for their Cures and for a Cure Foundation, and they actually independently fund a lab doing research into SIOD at Stanford now. They've raised so much that they've restarted the fundraising on SIOD, and, and they are expanding it, and they're developing new discoveries and new new approaches to treating kids like Cruz and Paisley, and have actually financed some of the earliest work on new treatments, um, and their kids have been some of the earliest recipients of that. Jessica not only is incredible at helping her family, and she never takes no for an answer, whether it's for her kids or her foundation, uh, she also never takes no for an answer from us, and she calls me a lot when she finds bugs, and she's become one of the most important people we turn to to understand how our products are working, and in fact, uh, she's, she's found several issues that have helped us um, improve our tools and also correct bugs that were affecting fundraisers worldwide. We know that, we, that the people with the most valuable insight are the ones who use our products every day. People like Jess, who can tell us what's good and who's not. And if we keep them at the core of everything we're doing, we take input from them, we make sure that we're serving them, and we make sure that people and connection is at the heart of everything we do, we'll build better tools for them and have more impact in the world. I really, I love knowing that the products we create can provide happiness, they can connect people, and they can change lives like Jessica's and Cruz's and Paisley's for the better. As a PM, when you're stressing over deadlines and goals, it can feel overwhelming. But when you build products with the North Star of helping people connect in more meaningful ways, the results shine through. And so I would encourage you, as a product manager, um, building mission-driven products, keep your North Star at the center of everything you do, no matter what you do. It matters to people like Jess and Cruz and Paisley and the people around the world who will benefit from your products. Thank you very much.